Welcome to Code Corner. We are covering the 2020 NEC Article 690.1 scope. Uh, we've done a previous one, uh, part one, where we just covered basic PV systems with no energy storage. And Ryan, Ryan went through those diagrams and gave us some information about those and where the PV system disconnect is located and essentially where the PV system stops, um, which is really handy um, when you get into energy storage systems and trying to figure out what sections of the code to apply where. All right, so we'll we'll jump back in and read that scope one more time briefly. This article, 690, applies to solar PV systems other than those covered by Article 691, which are five megawatt systems and above, including the array circuits, inverters, and controllers for such systems. The systems covered by this article include those interactive with other electric power production sources or standalone or both. These PV systems may have AC or DC output for, for utilization, okay? So nothing new there, um, but it does point us, of course, to those diagrams within Article 690. So I'm gonna jump into the ones that happen to have energy storage in them. The first one we're looking at here is an AC coupled system. And before I go diving into um, this art, you know, this diagram and how the code applies, I just wanna back up a minute and say, you know, uh, let's talk a bit, little bit about these systems and, and why they're employed or, or where you see them uh, most commonly. And essentially with an AC coupled system, uh, they're most often installed when there's an existing PV system on site and you want to add energy storage later. That's the most com common application I see with an AC coupled system. Um, or if you want to utilize a packaged energy storage system, say maybe say the Tesla, uh, where there's an AC output only, um, you have to AC couple that to a PV system because there is no way to DC couple that. And so what does that mean to AC couple? Um, it essentially means that we are coupling our energy, or sorry, our, our power production sources um, on the AC side of the bus, okay? So the PV system is outputting, once it goes through the interactive inverter, it has an AC output. Our energy storage system, which in this case, we're showing some batteries with an energy storage disconnect and a multi-mode inverter, at this point, it also outputs AC. So we're coupling, we're combining those power sources on the AC side. So they're thus AC coupled. An interesting thing to note, obviously, um, on this is we have two inverters, okay? Um, in the previous slides, when uh, Ryan was covering those, but there was just a single inverter or maybe there was multiple micro inverters, um, but essentially they're interactive inverters. They weren't involving anything that could operate in a multi, in, um, different modes as can a multi-mode inverter. And in this case, the multi-mode inverter, um, essentially one thing to note is that we have moved that PV system disconnect output from being combined or, or tapping into the main service panel over here. Um, we've actually moved that connection into what we're calling a backed up loads panel. And so that's a key thing to note with this AC coupled system, um, that connection is going to look different in an AC coupled system versus a strict grid inter interactive system. And what's actually happening here um, is that you need an AC signal basically to uh, make this interactive inverter stay online or, or become or come online. Essentially, if it doesn't see anything, if it doesn't see a signal, like if the grid goes out in the previous slide, it would also shut down um, due to its listing and, and the requirements for it listing to not island of the grid. Um, in the case of an AC multi-mode, AC coupled multi-mode system, we've added energy storage and we actually would like to keep this PV array functioning during an outage situation. And so how that's accomplished is we're taking that signal from the multi-mode inverter and we're feeding it into our backup loads panel, panel, which is the basically the interconnection point for these two power production sources. And it creates a synthetic grid essentially um, for that to keep that interactive inverter online. The other thing that's happened during an outage, of course, is that we have disconnected automatically from the grid, okay, on this side of the equation. So you can kind of consider um, there's going to be a little device inside the multi-mode inverter, uh, the microgrid inner uh, disconnect, the mid, the microgrid interconnected interconnection device, mid, um, and that's going to do its job and open up that connection point between the multi-mode inverter and the utility so that it cannot backfeed any power during an outage into the into your main service panel or up into the grid. So the only thing I can, I was gonna jump in and just saying, you know, kind of beating the drum that I always seem to beat on that PV system disconnect and how the 
interactive, what we have highlighted under 690 is not at all required to make that the bottom part of that system run. And so the PV system and how we used to kind of commingle energy storage under 690, but now it's completely separate. Oh, yeah. And um, so we're, we need to draw that line. And again, for rapid shutdown, because now it's very clear, we don't have to rap have any rapid shutdown on that energy storage because it's not part of the PV system. Exactly. And so one of the things I wanted to point out here is that while NEC Article 690 used to have a part eight called storage batteries, and it was almost two pages long in the 2014 NEC, um, but in the 2017 NEC, that title was actually changed to energy storage systems and it pared it down essentially to a pointer to article 706 and it's remained that way um, in the 2020 version as well and so one of the things that we're doing here is highlighting this side of the diagram what falls under the purview of article 690 okay and it really basically stops at the pv system disconnect as ryan was saying um and what that means is even though we do have energy storage in our system, our PV system, um, we we kind of get a little bit sidetracked with Article 706 because we're not as familiar and we, we get a little bit like, oh my gosh, what's in there? What am I not doing? But we can't forget all those Article 690 requirements that are still going to apply on this side of the system. So um, I can also move on to a DC coupled system. Okay, and I well, since I gave a little bit of background about the AC coupled systems, I'll talk about DC coupled just briefly. Um, it's really the common way to um, to comprise a, an energy storage system with solar if you're going to install it at the same time as a PV array, or historically anyway, I would say that was the case. Um, essentially, you know, back in the old days when it was um, really before uh, interactive systems were really common, but we, and so we already had energy storage in our systems, um, but we wanted to actually connect to the grid as well. That's when you saw a lot of DC coupled multi-mode systems. Okay. And they still exist for, for a variety of reasons. There's actually some advantages here um, that I might point out um, to a DC coupled system. But what it basically means is that we are now com combining our energy sources, our power production sources on the DC side of the equation. Okay. So we've got a, a DC array with DC output, um, which is essentially going to go through a PV system disconnect. And then it'll go through a charge controller and start charging up the energy storage battery bank or energy storage system, I should say. And so, and that all happens on the DC side. We don't have to have any energy conversion um, from DC to AC and back from AC to DC for that to happen. It all happens on the DC side. And so uh, historically these were common. I would say Y2K days were really, when I saw a lot of these or installed a lot of these, uh, but these days, um, there are other reasons to do this as well. Um, actually, one of the things to notice is because there is only one inverter, there's a higher efficiency um, potentially from this type of a system because we're only converting from DC to AC once, okay, instead of twice, like we did with the last system. I think, I think maybe the to to try and you know bring it all in. Yeah. Um, so the other you know like with the AC coupled system, really the big thing here is looking at where that PV system disconnect yep. is. And what I always want to try and point out to people is on a DC coupled system, the PV system disconnects over there on the DC side. It's not an, on the AC output side. And so this becomes a, a differentiation, a different point. And again, how do we apply PV system disconnect, the rules and the regulations and everything that goes along with that. So knowing how to apply it or how, where that PV system disconnect ends is pretty important. Absolutely, that's a really good point because um, this does look fairly different from the interactive systems. And if you're looking for an AC disconnect um, to end your PV system at, um, you're not gonna find it in a DC coupled system. So that's a, a really a, a primary point to drive home with a DC coupled system where the PV system ends. And that's why we've put this uh, border, this blue border around it so that when we are going through our diagrams, we can apply the code that, in the appropriate spots. And when we get into 706 article sections, we'll do the same with 706 and, and overlay that code section onto the, our diagrams as well to give you a really clear understanding of where one code section stops and where one ends. The crazy thing is there's going to be multiple code sections mm -hmm. for other parts of the system. So it's not that simple necessarily, but at least with the PB side, it kind of <laughs> is. <laughs> We're trying to make it, but yeah, it does get complex. 
So that's it for part two of Article 690.1 scope. Um, we want to remind you, you can talk, contact us if you want to offer up suggestions for article sections you would like to see covered in, a, in an upcoming series. Please reach out to us at education at mayfield.energy. We also, of course, offer a full suite of other services uh, through Mayfield Energy, um, Mayfield Renewables, such as design services and um, all kinds of other things. Come to our website and check us out. We'd love to hear from you and we'd love to engage with you.